This is fairly interesting, nothing wrong with it. But this is something else altogether. Let's talk about it. Now, before we dive right in, let's talk about what the word isometric means. Here's a grid representing some kind of area, and this is a top-down view. Note that all the spaces are identical in size. Now let's rotate the camera 45 degrees about the z-axis, still a top-down view. Then we'll rotate the camera again, but this time within the xy plane instead of about the z-axis. This view is typically referred to as perspective. It is a depiction of 3D space on your 2D screen, and it achieves this because there is a horizon. Note that a grid space closer to you seems to be larger than a grid space that's far away from you, even though we know that truly all the spaces are identical. I'm going to leave those highlights, and I'm not going to move the camera. Now watch the grid very carefully. Here we go. What I just did is switch the camera mode from perspective projection to orthographic projection. Notice that the spaces all appear to be the same size again, whether they're close to you or far away. This method of presentation is commonly used in formal engineering applications because it allows you to accurately illustrate the dimensions of a 3D object without sacrificing its proportions, hence the term isometric, of or having equal dimensions. Additionally, you see this practice used in many video games, such as Diablo or Baldur's Gate. And that's the reason that those games are sometimes referred to as isometric, because of those two things, where the camera is located and what kind of projection is being used, namely orthographic instead of perspective. For this exercise, you'll need some isometric graph paper. If you don't want to buy any, you can print some of your own. In the description of this video is a download link for a PDF that I made. Note that it has three pages with varying darkness for the grid lines, so you can choose whichever you like. For this tutorial, I'm using the darkest one to help make sure that it's clear as possible for the camera. Here is the map that we're going to convert to isometric in just a moment. I'll keep it at the right hand side of the screen the whole time. Now I wanted to do this all in one single take, so it's very sloppy, I move very fast, I don't use a ruler, uh, the, the end product doesn't look fantastic, but you'll get the idea, you'll get the principles, and that's what we're after here. So here we go. So the first thing to do is establish which way is north, and logically it just sort of feels right that the upper right direction should be north. We'll begin with room one, which is three by three squares, so we'll count out three vertices, and we'll draw the south wall first. And we know there's a door on that wall, so we'll put that in. And we'll draw the remaining walls. And here you can see I'm going to draw the north wall last. And then the door that's in that wall. So we move on to room number two. There's a short 10 foot section. And then we'll just chase the perimeter by looking at the map on the side. Now notice for the diagonal, we're actually doing a diagonal line, even though on our paper it, it looks straight up and down or left and right because it's isometric, it's skewed. So we keep going around. Okay, and we have a door in the east side. Next we'll do room three. Now this is our first staircase and we can see from the map that it's, it's a 40 foot long staircase with a 30 foot rise. So here's the base of the stairway, and we're going to count one, two, three, four vertices, and then we're going to go up one, two, three vertices to get the high point of the stairway. So that's where it ends. And we'll go ahead and connect those points to get our stairwell. And I just draw a bunch of little lines to indicate the steps. Now technically there is enough information here for the user to know what's going on with the stairway, but visually I find that it helps to throw in these dotted lines just to, to help give perspective. And at the top is room 3, which again is a 3x3 room, so we'll draw that. 
there's a reason we're doing this. If you uh, have a multi-level dungeon, um, it'll become clear when we do room six later on why we wanted to do room three first. So moving on to room four, a short 10-foot corridor, and then this room, there's a, looks like a 20 by 30 platform, and then the rest of the room is recessed by 10 feet. So we'll do the platform first, and then we're going to drop down one vertices, one vertex rather, for 10 feet, and we'll draw the rest of the room. And you can see I'm counting out the squares so that they match the source map. There we go. Now you should use a ruler when you do this. I'm doing this freehand so I can get through it very quickly and uh, it's not a half hour long video. So we need to get over to uh, room five now. So the first thing, we count two vertices over, one vertice, vertex up, and we get that 20 foot stairway with a 10 foot rise, dotted lines to give it some context, and the little lines for the steps. Then we turn a corner and we're gonna go it looks like we go 20 feet before we encounter a door and we'll pause there so room 5 is a lot of diagonals so you can see we cut across and connect the vertices appropriately yep easy enough and so we'll move on it's another 20 feet and then we come to a stairway going down 10 feet so we're undoing the stairway we just did so we'll count over two vertices and down one over two and down one and we connect those points and I'm not gonna do the dotted line for context there's it's a little busy right there and it is really not needed it you could do it but I skipped it so at the bottom there's a 10 foot landing and a door that goes into room 6. So this is 30 feet wide and then it's pretty long. Now some of it is obscured by room 3 above so what we do is dotted lines to indicate that's where the wall is underneath but it is below room 3. So we go I think this is a total of 70 feet um, we don't draw over the stairway, we go underneath it, and it looks like I overshot there a little bit. That's alright. Okay, we know there's a secret door here up in the corner with a hallway beyond, so that goes 20 feet before it makes a turn to the south. Alright, and now we have to draw a circle. Now we know this is a 3x3 three three square circle, um, a perfect circle on isometric paper looks like an oval. It would be a perfect oval. Uh, it's hard to draw freehand. Don't sweat it too much. You can see I clearly didn't, but it gets the job done. All right, secret door, secret door, and connect that final corridor. And there we have it. That's the, that's the dungeon laid out. Now, last thing... Uh, be very aggressively plant the pen down and sort of swipe upward and remove the pen from the paper as you're swiping. It's a, it's a very tense, aggressive motion, and what that gives you is a nice taper at the top of these little ticks. And these sort of hint at where the corners of the walls are, but you can see as I'm doing this how the drawing starts to come to life, and it, it becomes even easier to get the, I guess, to get the context of depth and, and where the rooms end, if you will. Uh, I'm not a pro, so I don't know the exact principles behind this, but, um, well, there you go. So I'll number the rooms. And there we have it. Here's a little close-up. Again, uh, you should use a ruler and take your time. You'll come out with a much more high-quality product than this. Hey, 
And here's the same thing thrown together in Photoshop. It took about 10 minutes or so to put together. Now, if this was interesting to you, there are some far, far better resources to check out than me. Here's a non-comprehensive list of some truly talented people. I'll include links in the description below. FantasticMaps.com Black Dragon Terrain on Facebook. See the photos section. Dyson's Dodecahedron. And feel free to leave other references, including yourself, in the YouTube comments below. I am Wylock, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time.